Welcome back everyone as we continue to discuss the topic of emotional wellness and seeking treatment for international students. Today we'll be rejoined by Dr. Shua Kim, a multicultural specialist and licensed psychologist who will be discussing confidentiality when it comes to seeking treatment. Dr. Shua, thank you once again for joining us. I know that many international students have this as a concern of confidentiality and family members finding out about an issue that they may be having, or it's somehow ending up on their permanent record or their academic record that they spoke to a counselor or psychologist. How does it work in terms of privacy and keeping things confidential when it comes to seeking treatment and talking to a therapist or psychologist about an issue. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned about that. This is the number one things I want to definitely emphasize and let international students know. So coming to counseling is confidential, meaning that you know everything the students shared with their therapist will be kept just between the student and the therapist um, or within that uh, treatment agencies. No information will be automatically sent to, say, international center or their department or any other institutions or faculties or their students' parents or their friends. That's kind of a, all the information will be kept within the system. A lot of times I also wanted to say that counseling is different from go, seeing a physician. It is it's a, a longer process, so it's just like building a relationship with someone. So you will meet someone, have multiple conversations in the same environment. And hopefully through those personal and meaningful conversations, you will know more about yourself and make sense about your experience, connecting dots and learn about some strategies and skills to better cope emotionally, academically, socially. And so in a way, there's a lot of components of counseling. And people come to counseling for different reasons, basically. And sometimes it can be about anxiety a person is dealing with, depression, stress, or, you know, relationship issues. It could be academic difficulties, and it could be eating concerns, or, you know, family issues identity, sexuality. So there's just a lot of different reasons people come to counseling. There's no big or small topic, nor there's any appropriate or inappropriate topics. You can always bring anything in your mind you're concerned about to counseling. Every concern is valid and it will get the empathy and, and will get the support and appropriate treatment for that. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. There's a multitude of reasons why someone might want to talk to a counselor, big or small. Maybe someone just wants a soundboard and just wants to talk about their day with someone that they feel isn't going to judge them. Could be as simple as that. Thank you so much for all of your expertise and we appreciate all of the insight that you have offered us today. Thank you, Sally. Glad to share. And as discussed, there are a number of resources available that you can find here that Shiwa shared with us earlier. If you have any questions for Dr. Keen and what we've discussed today, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll be sure to get back to you. We appreciate you all joining us and hope that everyone feels comfortable and compelled to seek treatment for your emotional wellness when you need to. Thank you.